Hi, this is Daniel DeTuro. In my introduction to induction cooking video, I've had several comments about whether the power, temperature, or both settings should be used to set the cooking temperature. Power and temperature scales are found on some single burner portable induction cooktops. Multi-burner built-in induction cooktops have power settings like gas and electric cooktops and ranges. Instead of knobs, most have a digital scale to set the burner power between 0 and 9 or 1 to 10, depending on the brand and model. Some scales may also be labeled low, medium, and high. Low, medium, and high settings are no different on an induction cooktop than on an electric or gas cooktop. One difference is that gas and electric ranges have knobs with infinitely variable adjustments between low and high. This one also has numbers with low equaling 1 and high equaling 9. This is the same as induction cooktops with this model having low equaling 1 and high equaling 10. Like many microwave ovens, low setting 1 equals about 10% power medium setting 5 would equal about 50% power, and high setting 10 equals 100% power. This model also has a control bar with 16 bars. Using a finger, you can swipe across the bars to adjust the power between 1 and 10. The extra bars are for decorative purposes only. If the power setting corresponds to gas and electric cooktops, what's the purpose of the temperature setting? This temperature setting has caused confusion and questions like, do I need to set both the power and temperature? The answer is no. Power and temperature settings are not independent. For example, you can't set this cooktop on power level 10 and have it maintain a temperature of 140 degrees. Although the owner's manual says the temperature range is from 140 to 425 degrees Fahrenheit, there's an asterisk that says the temperature indicated on the bars are for reference only. For precise cooking temperatures and food safety, always use a thermometer to verify temperature. For most home cooking, temperature is critical when making candy or for deep fat frying. When melting chocolate to make candy, milk chocolate should be heated to 105 degrees and dark chocolate to 120 degrees but the lowest setting on this cooktop is 140 degrees. Induction creates a magnetic field in iron cookware that heats the iron. Heat from the cookware is transferred by conduction to the induction cooktop. This causes the cooktop to become hot. At best, any temperature measurement would be at the interface between the cookware and the cooktop. It is not measuring the temperature of what is in the cookware. That's one reason why you need a thermometer to measure the temperature of the food to prevent foodborne illness. In another example, water boils at about 212 degrees Fahrenheit. While this cooktop has a temperature setting of 210 to 250 degrees, most recipes say to increase the temperature to medium high to high to bring liquids to a boil. Recipes for deep fat frying specify an oil temperature between 350 to 370 degrees Fahrenheit. Regardless of the cooktop temperature setting, the measurement is not the oil temperature, but the interface temperature between the pan and the cooktop. To measure food temperature, you'll need a thermometer you can place in the food. This combination candy and deep frying thermometer also have markings for scalded milk, for different stages of sugar-based candies, and for deep fat frying. A thermometer will give you the food temperature, whereas an induction cooktop scale gives you the cooktop temperature. Some takeaways from this video are, for induction cooktops with a power and temperature setting, use the power setting. A temperature feature is a marketing tool and practically worthless. If the temperature setting is accurate, it is the cooking surface temperature, not the food temperature. For accurate food temperatures, use a candy, deep frying, or other thermometer. Please leave a comment if you have any questions about this video. Thank you for watching.